In case you haven't heard, there's a movement afoot. No, it's not the Occupy Wall Street movement that I'm referring to. Rather, this is a movement about health, about supporting healthy people and healthy places. It's a movement that is engaging leaders from communities, philanthropy, government agencies, people serving across disciplinary fields and political perspectives, all coming together in collaboration. And at the heart of this movement is a desire to impact positive changes on the very systems and structures that determine our everyday lives. From the food we eat, to the paths we take to get to school or to work, to the access we have to care services that support our well-being. The movement I am speaking of springs from a vision to create environments that support a healthier, more equitable, and prosperous country. This may sound like a tall order, and it is, but this movement to build healthy, sustainable, livable communities is getting a tremendous burst of momentum these days from the internet of all places. Thanks to 21st century technology, the people involved in this movement have a unique online interactive space where they can go to network with others, find targeted resources, and see what kinds of health and sustainability initiatives are happening in their community and across the country. And the space where all of this is taking place is called the Community Commons. I'm joined today by Tyler Norris, who has played a fundamental role in the creation of the Community Commons. And I've asked Tyler to share more about this movement for healthier communities and how the Community Commons is playing a pivotal role in advancing that movement. So Tyler, you've been involved with the Healthy, Sustainable, Livable Communities movement, as we're loosely calling it, for quite some time now. Perhaps you can begin by telling us from your perspective what that means and how the community commons sprung out of that movement. Well, maybe the place to begin is that this movement we're talking about, which is at least two and a half, almost three decades long, is democracy at its finest to start with, where recognizing the complexity of the issues that our communities face, like obesity, helping our kids have a life trajectory and find their way into good uh, jobs and so forth, that no one organization or no one sector can solve many of these challenges ourselves. And so in communities all across the country, business, government, nonprofit, faith communities, citizens of all walks of life, have come together to address these issues in place-based collaborations where they're setting a vision for the future of their community, they're using metrics to identify how they're performing, they're identifying gaps, and they're mobilizing community and political will to take action. And if you look at that across the country, we're finding over 3,000 of these partnerships, literally for every city, community, county in the country has some configuration like that. And the Community Commons was birthed to, first of all, help the country see all of these at, at one time, be able to find who's doing what on what, so that uh, the communities could be in direct relationship each, with each other, to, to get smarter together, trade notes, what's working, what hasn't worked, and so that we can not duplicate that. And then secondly, to be able to build a a uh, what I would call a transpartisan constituency, Republican, Democrat field, you know, who cares when we're really working on the issues, that is focused on creating healthier public policy. Mm. So uh, you were involved in this movement for quite some time, and you saw the need evolving for some sort of interactive space for communities, mm -hmm. partners, funders, mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. leaders, all to come together on these issues, and this is how the community commons came into being? Uh, absolutely. You know, I've had the chance to work in over 300 communities over the last couple decades, and I've always been struck, even by people who are the most knowledgeable, that they don't even know always what's going on in their own community, let alone what's going on around the country that can help them improve what they're doing. And so the Commons was birthed out of, let's understand the assets and the initiatives that exist on the ground, what's working about them, create an environment where people could learn from each other. For example, we have a big network of folks who are working on nutrition strategies in child care settings, and they're distributed all across the country. Some of them are funded nationally, some of them have no funding, some of, their, some of them their funding is sunset. And yet we want them to be able to be in a learning community with each other, which is what they said they want most, is peer-based learning. And secondly, there was a sense that 
if we're going to create the political will in the country to have an investment strategy that creates a strong third century, that creates the, 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 the greatest health and prosperity for the nation, that we need to start creating a, a sense of the combined power, if you will, of these wonderful place-based efforts uh, across the country. And what's most powerful about this is there's no one center. There's not some organization or group leading all of this. This is a phenomenon that's led of women and men and people of all walks of life trying to improve their communities which together are creating a major force to help improve the, the health and prosperity of our nation. Mm. And the Commons was birthed to connect that and galvanize it as a force for, for healthy public policy. So can you tell us or walk us through a couple of the key features of the Community Commons? I know people may not um, be sitting in front of a computer, but just sort of walk us through what are the the potent tools that you said we need to have in this space to help accelerate this movement. Sure, and and first of all, the we need to have, that came from listening to hundreds of communities and literally thousands of voices. So what I'm about to tell you is essentially a response to what the country was asking for. But if you go to www.communitycommons.org, um, you'll find uh, four sort of major areas. The first of those is to kind of connect with what's happening, and there you'll find the map of the movement, and you'll be able you can go in and either enter a city or a state or just look at the map and drill into it like you would a Google map and find over 3,000 initiatives that uh, are, are doing evidence-based or evidence-informed action to improve health and quality of life, sustainability, livability, etc. So you can find who's doing what. And then there's all kinds of ways to search by topic or geography or who the funders are and that sort of thing. That's one thing you'll find at the Commons. Secondly, you'll find dialogue spaces. And again, everybody said, we want to be able to be in peer learning. We appreciate experts from time to time, but mostly we want to learn from each other. So there are dialogue places that are topical on particular issues. Some of those are curated by subject matter experts, and others are just sort of open for whoever wants to come in. And those are very vibrant learning communities that are helping people improve their performance. The third piece, and one of the most powerful parts of the Commons, is our GIS data engine. The Community Commons, thanks to our partnership with the University of Missouri's uh, Center for Applied Research in Environmental Systems, or CARES as it's known, has over 7,000 GIS data layers. We have the most robust, largest free data source in the country of all of the determinants of health, over 7,000. So you can go in there and find whatever data, with like the granular diabetes, diabetes data, hospital data, crime data, youth education outcomes, the number of kids that are around schools that are eligible for free and reduced lunch, mm -hmm. all the census data, literally around the spectrum of issues, you can find data all the way down to the granularity level at the tract level or the block level that that data exists. And we built free GIS tools so that you can make GIS maps of food deserts or play deserts. Or I was talking yesterday with some investment bankers about funding deserts where there's inadequate capital to really make investments. So you can make maps and, and all of that. And then finally is a resource wiki where um, people can find the resources that they need. It's not just an archive of all these tools, but a very interactive place that people can contribute as well as borrow. And we see the commons not as a co consumer place, but a prosumer environment environment where just like people use the resources in the commons, it's also a place that people contribute resources into the commons who like their stories, their videos, their stories of what's worked, what's not. And I know there's a place to register on the commons. You have probably a, a good handful at this point of uh, registered users since you've launched. Yeah, absolutely. We, we launched into the existing place-based partnerships. So rather than being a big national launch, we started with essentially those kind of collaborative partnerships that are doing this kind of work, and that was our core community to begin with, and we're, we'll spread more, and of course it's a wide open invitation, but if you go to communitycommons.org, you can go in and register, and that allows you, there's no cost or anything like that, but then you're just on, on the, in the system, and that allows you to access all of, uh, all of those. We have over 2,500 active registered users right now, and many, many, many more thousands than that have come and used parts of the commons and, and come from time to time. But again, we're just at a beta phase right now and, and still very actively learning. And instead of trying to say that the commons is fully built out, rather we're having the user experience and people who benefit from the commons drive what we build rather than 
us getting ahead of the country, essentially. Right, yeah. right. And the Community Commons launched in October 2011, yeah. and I understand it's gone through some of those evolutionary yes. phases. Maybe you could speak a little bit to what was some initial feedback you received right. on perhaps the interfacing of the community commons and some enhancements that you made. Well, I think the most important decision we ever made was to make this a learning site, not a you know perfection site. <laughs> and, so, and so we launched the commons uh, at the end of October 2011 uh, in time for uh, the First Lady's Partnership for a Healthier America event and the Equity Summit for Policy Link and a couple of major national events in November and December, including all the Centers for Disease Control Community Transformation Grant um, opportunities. And, uh, and we had literally hundreds of people say, this is terrific, you love being here, and build in more social media interfaces and uh, build out some dialogue spaces that are curated. Um, one of the major things that we built out that's a distinction between 1.0 and when we launched our 2.0 version um, in early March, just a few weeks ago, um, was starter maps. So a lot of people say, you have the ability to make a GIS map on there, but I don't know how to make a GIS map. And so now you can go in there and you find a, like a food desert map that's been designed by experts to show where access to healthy, affordable food are in an area. We built it with our partners in Louisville, Kentucky. But you can go into that map of Louisville, Kentucky and look at the data points they have there and type in Oakland, like where we're sitting today or any other city in the country, and the same archetypal design of the map for Louisville will go for the zip code or county that you picked. So you all of a sudden can have a food desert map for your locale as a lay user that's never made a GIS map, Excellent. you just made one. And then you can go in there and you could tinker with it and take a day layer out or add one. And that makes the commons very powerful mm -hmm. data and GIS tools available to a lay user who may have no familiarity but wants to get to play in it. And then we have all kinds of super users that are continuing to build out those kind of maps that then lay users have access to. Mm -hmm. So those are among the enhancements over the last few months. Excellent. Um, we've heard a lot about the obesity epidemic in America, with nearly two-thirds of Americans being overweight or obese. And to speak to that epidemic, Kaiser Permanente has partnered with HBO and several other high-profile health organizations to roll out a public health campaign called The Weight of the Nation that launches this coming May 2012. Can you talk to us a little bit about how the community commons is going to be used to further the message of that campaign? Well, first of all, uh, there's no question that the obesity epidemic in this country and the wave of chronic disease and the costs, the human toll and the economic toll on the other side of it is perhaps the greatest threat to our nation at this particular time, a threat from the inside out. So what's happening with Weight of the Nation and this uh, Kaiser Permanente, Michael and Susan Dell Foundation, HBO and other partnership is so vital to mobilize the country to not only have people change things for themselves and their friends and family, but to be able to change environments in their community, food environments, beverage environments. So what people will be able to do is they say, I want to act in my community. Where do I go? Uh, the communitycommons.org is a place to go in and say, well, who's already working on those issues? How do I plug in with them? They're doing work that's informed by the evidence base, that's already moving forward on priorities. That gives people a chance to plug into uh, existing thoughtful, effective partnerships, you know, who may want to take action. And then for those partnerships to be able to take advantage of the incredible uh, media and all that's going to go around this uh, campaign and the, and the airings in the middle of, of May, the screenings, uh, to be able to have, you know, to kind of fresh it. energy, yes. catch the energy of this and sort of supply that. So the Commons will be a place to find out what's working where, to be able to be in dialogue um, with other people who are taking action on this and be a part of ensuring that um, that everything that's being invested in the way to the nation has a very strong engagement strategy so we don't look back and say, oh, what a great set of films. Rather, here's what happened on the ground all across America as a result of way to the nation. Uh, the campaign. Great. So communities and, and funder groups and, and yes. organizations of all types and individuals as well can go on there Absolutely. and find the resources and the information to get connected to this broader movement that we've been discussing. Absolutely. That's right. All of those groups. Our primary audiences are community partnerships, funders, and these intermediary organizations that help. But it's great for any individual to be able to go into the commons and find out uh, who's doing what where and how they might engage. 
Thank you so much, Tyler. So I've been joined by Tyler Norris today here at Kaiser Permanente, and if you'd like to learn more about the Community Commons, you can go online and visit www.communitycommons.org and explore. Thanks so much. Thank you.